Hey folks, how are you doing? So as you see, did some big blades today. I'm barely holding the phone actually. Uh, bad day. I wanted to do the knife cherry and uh, I was doing really good. I had two of them, you know, heated it already. And I checked that everything was good straight. At least look at it, just quick check. So I started grinding, it was pre-ground just like this. So I started grinding, do the initial grind, primary bevel, nice. Do the really cool swedge on it. I mean, check it out. That's pretty pretty tall and pretty even switch on such a big blade, you know, pretty pretty nice task to pull off. And then when I'm getting done, you know, I'm checking the switch, the symmetry of the switch, and something is off. And I'm like, I am keep going back to the switch, you know, grinding, you know, fixing it. And everything seems perfect, you know, they are perfectly even, the same angles, and just perfect. But if, if I look down, you know, you can kind of see that it goes one way. I'm checking my grind and everything is good. It's just uh, for some reason, I don't know if I didn't notice it or if it wasn't so prominent until you had actually those shiny edges there to point it out. It has a slight warp to it, which blows, you know. It's still a functional knife and, uh, you know, I'll we'll probably just have to keep it. But I didn't plan on keeping this one. I wanted to make something really cool and sell it. But you can see that it's it's not bad warp. It's I think it's about like one sixteenth of an inch. You know, uh, this goes that way across the whole length. So that's really microscopic. But you know, for a tool, uh, you know, you know, I love knife cherry. I actually sold mine just because somebody approached me and they they wanted knife cherry, but they didn't really they couldn't afford the whole new thing because these are not cheap. So I just cleaned up my old one, it was the first one I made and uh, I sold it, you know, for really, really cheap considering for, you know, how much, how much they normally are. So, I mean, I might do this, uh, same thing with this eventually, but I don't know, I have to save it, everything holds up good over time, I use it. And uh, once I saw the, the, the warp, I actually wanted to see, once I knew that the color doesn't really matter, I don't have to please anybody. I wanted to see the new G10 I picked up at the East Coast Custom Knife Show from Macecraft and it was, they called it fire, fire pattern and it's actually pretty cool maybe except that yellow, I I personally wouldn't put that yellow there probably but uh, the black is nice, the red is really nice ruby red, orange is orange you know but the cool thing is it has really cool liners so you have a little bit of black, tiny tiny little one then you have looks like a what is it? it looks like one layer of yellow and one layer of red then you have thicker black and then the yellow orange red and black so pretty cool combination like i said maybe except that yellow i'm not a yellow really yellow fan i do love red i love orange i love black so that's all good maybe the yellow kind of throws me off i think it's nice that little touch of yellow in that microscopic liner here all the way towards the core but the the thicker thicker layer not so sure but you know what for me it's bright so I can spot it when I'm outdoors I like it actually I can regret that I didn't do the same thing on my Waki but it just you know you gotta you know that it looks better when it's dark when it's natural but honestly when I'm out and about I leave the knife somewhere in the sheet or without the sheet just stuck in the tree or something and it's always easier to spot it with a kind of brighter handle so this one's gonna be perfect for it. It's nicely contoured, very comfortable, heavy sandblast, so it has a nice texture to it. And it feels great in the hand. This one is actually tapered tank. That was another thing why I was really pissed that I don't get to sell it. Because I've, <laughs> I've tapered the tank on this beast. You know, it starts with like 5 16 a little over 5 16 thick. And it was a pretty cool piece, you know. Nice grind, nice swedge and the taper tank. So it would have been really cool and if everything worked out I wouldn't do the crazy color, I would do something that everybody liked so you know either some nice wood or carbon fiber but you know <laughs> we learn and not everything can go perfect and this happens so nothing I can do about it. Uh, it performs well I already tested it a little bit it, it cuts really good it really cuts pretty much the same like the wacky it really does. It has, I can chop those that, the 2x2, two two, I can chop it in one hit when I get a little lucky. Just like I can with the Waki, so that's pretty cool. And when I was on the, the big blades, I actually finally, 
pre-ground the second peacemaker right there. It's actually already promised for one of my one of my best customers and good buddy in Alaska. Big knife guy. He has two Excaliburs. And instantly when he saw when I did this, he told me like Mike, I gotta have the peacemaker when you get around doing it. So same there it is pre-ground stamped number two and like i did on mine gauko knives peacemaker on the spine old school stamps i really like it it's gonna be a piece it makes the knife chatty it looks like a tiny little baby look at that <laughs> oh it's gonna be fun blade really really fun blade. it's like four inches longer something like that so guys hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching Thanks for all the support yesterday. Take care, stay safe, and remember, don't cut yourself. Certainly not with those.